Bonjour tout le monde. <laughs> Welcome to Vancouver. What a great turnout for what I know will be a truly historic week. Thank you for being here, for making the trip, and for bringing your expertise and your ideas with you to Canada. I know we've got folks from around the world on the live stream too. This summit is truly bringing people together. I want to begin by acknowledging that we are on the traditional Coast Salish territory of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish peoples, and I thank them for their opening welcome. And of course, I also have to take a second to thank Katya for her kind introduction and mostly for her incredible, legendary leadership. Je tiens également à remercier tous ceux qui se sont mobilisés pour Women Deliver au cours de la dernière année. Activistes, leaders communautaires, féministes. C'est grâce à vous qu'on a réalisé des progrès. Merci d'attirer notre attention sur les écarts qui persistent. Plus que jamais, on a besoin de vous. I think you all have simultaneous interpretation on your chairs, so don't be uh, shy about using it. On est au Canada. My friends, I can think of no better place for this summit than here in Canada. After all, we're a country built on diversity, a country that knows that we're stronger together, embracing our differences and using our collective power to drive change. As a father, I can say without a doubt that there's nowhere else I'd rather raise my daughter, Ella Grace, and my sons, Hadrian and Xavier. But the rights we enjoy in Canada, and the rights so many have enjoyed around the world, are not guaranteed. Progress can backslide. We're seeing it happen. Gender equality is under attack. And I can only imagine how hard it is to be a feminist on the front lines. But that's the history of women's rights. Every step forward is met by another pushback. Women routinely face misogyny, racism, and hatred. And for women living with disabilities, discrimination is all too often the norm, not the exception. In the age of social media, it's never been easier to taunt and spread abhorrent views views that are increasingly creeping into our public debates. Individuals and interest groups are trying to roll back women's rights, and politicians are giving in to the pressure, shamefully campaigning to undo women's hard-won victories. That's a daunting reality to face, but my friends, we are not powerless. It's up to us to fight back. Women, men, and gender diverse people, allies, neighbors, and communities, all of us standing together, all of us standing strong. We're here at Women Deliver because we believe in a better future. We're here because of the strength and determination of women who've seen injustice firsthand and refused to turn away. And now, their legacy falls to us, to all of you, to governments, to the grassroots, and to citizens. Mes amis, il reste beaucoup de travail à faire. Les femmes sont plus susceptibles que les hommes d'être victimes de violence et de vivre dans la pauvreté. Les femmes gagnent moins que les hommes pour le même travail. Partout dans le monde, des filles se battent encore pour leur droit d'aller à l'école. Des femmes meurent à la suite de maladies qu'on peut guérir. Et encore aujourd'hui, le droit fondamental d'une femme de choisir ce qu'elle veut faire de son propre corps est remis en question. Ce sont des défis majeurs auxquels les femmes sont encore confrontées des défis majeurs qui ne vont pas disparaître tout seuls. Si on veut du changement, 
on doit l'exiger. In 2015, we committed to putting gender equality at the heart of everything we do as a government. We promised to address the very real changes facing women in Canada and in countries around the world. And that's meant grappling with issues like sexism and misogyny, racism and colonialism. These challenges are complex and layered. So we won't always get it right, but we will always keep trying. On sait qu'on ne peut pas commencer à s'attaquer à l'injustice si on ne comprend pas d'abord le concept de l'intersectionnalité. Une femme de couleur est confrontée à des obstacles spécifiques, des obstacles uniques et différents de ceux d'une personne LGBTQ2 qui, elle aussi, fait face à des préjugés qui sont différents de ceux d'une femme autochtone. On doit reconnaître que la discrimination prend plusieurs formes et on doit surtout agir pour y mettre fin. This morning, in fact, was another significant step toward justice for Indigenous women in Canada. For too long, Indigenous women and girls have experienced violence at a rate that is staggering when compared to non-Indigenous women. Just over a month after forming government, we announced the creation of a national inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls following the recommendation of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. An inquiry that we launched based on the steadfast advocacy of families and survivors. We promised Canadians that we would start this process, a process that would ultimately chart a path for the future. Earlier this morning, the National Inquiry formally presented their final report in which they found that the tragic violence that Indigenous women and girls have experienced amounts to genocide. The strength of the families and survivors who bravely shared their truths have show, has shown us the way forward. We will do a thorough review of this report and develop and implement a national action plan to address violence against Indigenous women, girls, and LGBTQ and Two-Spirit people. <laughs> Working with Indigenous partners to determine next steps, we will include Indigenous women and girls, the voices of LGBTQ and Two-Spirit people, and family members and survivors. Our country can and must do better, and we will. We know that it's time to put an end to violence against all women including transgender, non-binary, and two-spirit people, which is why we launched the first ever national strategy on gender-based violence. And we know that advancing gender equality hinges on economic equality, too. We will continue to demand that women and men receive equal pay for work of equal value, that everyone has a safe place to live, and that parents can share the joys and responsibilities of raising children. En tant que Canadien, on refuse également de fermer les yeux sur les difficultés auxquelles sont confrontées les femmes au-delà de nos frontières. Grâce à notre politique d'aide internationale féministe, on continue d'aider les plus vulnérables. On appuie les efforts menés par les communautés visant à encourager l'autonomisation des femmes, que ce soit sur le plan social, politique ou économique. Parce que c'est un travail qui ne se limite pas juste à un investissement ou à une seule communauté. On doit intégrer l'égalité des sexes dans tout ce qu'on fait. Prenez par exemple 
le Conseil consultatif sur l'égalité des sexes qu'on a mis sur pied pour faire en sorte que les thèmes, les activités et les résultats du G7 tiennent compte des perspectives et des expériences uniques des femmes. En même temps, c'est une responsabilité qui ne revient pas seulement au Canada, mais bien aux pays du monde. Je pense entre autres à la déclaration de Charlevoix qu'on a conclue avec nos partenaires qui partageaient nos valeurs et nos objectifs. Le Canada, l'Union européenne, la Banque mondiale et d'autres pays se sont engagés à investir pour faire de l'égalité des sexes une réalité. On doit absolument unir nos forces pour défendre ce que tout le monde dans la salle sait trop bien, que les droits des femmes sont des droits de la personne. C'est vrai au Canada et partout dans le monde. So let me be clear. Our government will always be your partner, willing to admit when mistakes are made and working very hard to build a better future for all our children. My friends, I know and you know that we can't take our foot off the pedal, not even for a moment. There's simply too much at stake. But Canada's leadership isn't going anywhere. We will be that strong voice, your steadfast ally, not just when it's popular, but always unconditionally. We, we will keep working with you to move forward and to build more sustainable, more inclusive communi communities and movements. So let us use this week to get inspired, to learn from each other, and to recommit to a brighter tomorrow for women and girls everywhere. Together, we are stronger, and together, we can change our neighborhoods, our countries, and our world for the better. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Thank you very much, everyone.